got our plugs back in. I know on my, uh, at the end of my last video, I said I was going to put those plugs in with it sitting in the motor. That is not what we needed to do. I took it out and put it back in the lathe and put the plugs in there. You don't want to be hammering in soft plugs on top of your bearings, so. what I ended up doing. Some of these spacers they just slip right in on other blocks they're tight you gotta you know tap them in it really doesn't matter as long as it's torqued up and they're in place when you line bore it it's not an issue We'll fast forward through that part of it. All right, crankshafts in. Got plenty of end play. Indicator on and check it. It feels like it's about eight to ten thousand. Right. Just barely hanging on to that steel cap. At some point later on. My dad switched to uh, all aluminum main caps as well, so you had to like bolt a piece of metal to the block to stick your magnet on when you do it now. See what my how we're looking here. There we go. Eight thousandths. I knew it was in there somewhere.
and eight thousandths. So that's good. Turns pretty good. So we'll have to put our gaskets in here. That's how I usually do that right before I put the oil pan on. So we'll get our pistons ready and we'll put those in. But we're getting there. Actually, I found in uh, some of the paperwork here, I actually got uh, blueprints for the Le Mans rod. My dad was going to make them. He was going to make uh, Le Mans rods out of 4340. But he had the blueprint, or he drew the blueprints. I think this is one of his. I think he might have actually had the forging die made too at one point, but we never did have any made. Um, there's the cap. Just interesting. So I'm just taking a look at the uh, <clears throat> pistons for our uh, our camera build here. And uh, looks like everything is okay. Um, one thing I don't like is that these rod bolts here, Lamont's rods are supposed to have a washer under them, and these don't have it, which I think whoever made these bolts did that by design. But I don't like it, so... I do have these replacement ARP bolts. I'm going to go in and put them in. And I got the, the washers that go with them. So I'm going to swap all those out. And then we're going to put the caps back on and see where our clearance is. If the clearance is good, we'll roll with it. If And if they're round... And if not, I'll have to take them apart and resize the rods, but I don't anticipate having to do that. I think it'll just work. I know the weights on these aren't exactly going to be the same, but I'd... But these things are... I can look at them and tell they're soft. Well, they're not as hard as the ARB bolts. So we'll just go ahead and swap them out. So these rods only have one and a half thousandths of bearing clearance. I think this is supposed to be 2590. Let me double check that. Two five eighty eight nine tenths, just under two five eighty nine. So 
So it's a thousand ton deer, that's for sure. That's odd. Because all this stuff was... These rods have been reconditioned. I don't know why they would be a thou under. Let's see here. These are the bearings that came out of it. 756. CB 756. <clears throat> I don't even know what that is. This is a uh, micrometer with a ball on the end of it. You use that for measuring bearings. This thing here, 75 and a half thousandths. This is my 952 I wanted to use. 76 thousandths. So this bearing's a half a thou, half a thousandth bigger than this bearing here, which you add, take that times two because there's two halves, that's your thousand. So these rods were reconditioned to fit these bearings but these bearings are old and I don't have any more of them so it looks like I'll have to open these up about a thousand I bought this whole, uh, the uh, crank rods and pistons. I got all these off of Facebook Marketplace. I only get 500 bucks for it all. So the options are either to find more of those kind of bearings or open this up to the right size. We'll have to see what to do about that. I'll have to think about that a minute. Always something. All right, so I did make a uh, business decision here on this camera. These Le Mans rods, I just don't want to use them on, on this engine. Um, customer agreed to pay for the Le Mans rods, but uh, I just don't want to use them. Sometimes you got to do what's best for keeping the engine alive as opposed to what the customer wants because it'll never look good in your favor if it goes wrong. So this See what these have got going on here. Peace. These things are, <laughs> they came shipped like that, all oily. That's actually, that's rust proofing. Kind of bulging out of the box. That's kind of half-assed. But as a guy that uh, who's a manufacturer himself, it's 
Seeing things like this kind of gives you hope. Makes you feel like you're not so bad. here I set up this dial board gauge just to make sure I'm See, that's about two tenths over. They're supposed to be two inches, 590. So that's about two tenths over. I'll have to check them all. Yeah. This is a, uh, a super stock rod from Crower. This is like a $2,500 set of rods here. So it's, two, it's showing two tenths over two as well. That's probably because it's about 80 degrees today and it was about 30 degrees when I set up the style board gauge. See how close these are weight wise. All right, we're in grams. Six oh three on the big end. Let's see what this one is. They're within one gram that way. I'm not rebalancing nothing. <laughs> I'm going to just use them. Let's see what else we got. Eight hundred and twenty three grams. Eight hundred and twenty eight grams. Yeah, we're not rebalancing anything. We're going to just swap out the rods and go, which I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just go ahead and double check all my weights and clearances and we'll finally get our bottom end together. <laughs> 